coming, my friends. Oh, Welcome to the greatest city. So come this so far uh, for only 12 hours? For what, my friend? Business. So my last day without you is a an exploration of of chance encounter or probability or the idea that maybe there's a, a guiding hand or force in our lives, and it began or the the, the kernel of the idea comes from a, a real love story, and that's the story of my writing and producing partner Chris Silber, who met his wife many years ago on the uh, on the subway in Brooklyn. So we, we had always liked this idea that um, you know this, this one encounter can, can radically alter one's um, destiny in life. And so we toyed around with a bunch of different ideas and we took elements of that story and um, created more tension and decided to create a story that takes place in one day. This business executive uh, who's coming to New York from, from Europe, from Germany, to shut down a division of, uh, of this multinational company. And he meets this woman who is an aspiring singer-songwriter from Brooklyn, the daughter of a pastor. And on many ways, on paper, they seem very much different from one another, um, but they have a connection. Years ago, I had taken a uh, workshop at the Berlin Film Festival with Stephen Frears, and he, his mantra then uh, was, you know, 90% of good directing is casting and script, and um, and I think in many ways that's true. So for this film, we were, I think we were really lucky to get the cast we we did. I'd seen Nicole um, in in American Violet, and I was really amazed by her performance. She was, you know, just out of Juilliard at the time, this young actress, and. Um, and she really carried that movie. And so we had her come in for audition and um, you know, she nailed it. And so for me, we, you know, I was clear this is the, the person I want to play the Letitia role. And we went with Ken because we thought that he, he had all the, the, the character traits and, and had the acting chops to pull it off. He was very charming, but also could, could play this more um, severe numbers oriented finance guy. Um, in terms of the supporting characters uh, and actors, um, we wrote the role of Mahdi, who's the taxi driver or the limo driver. Um, we, we wrote that for Laith. Um, Laith had been in our other film Arranged and um, you know he's part of our New York family and he's just a wonderful actor and he was really concerned. It's sort of the first real comedic role he's ever played and um, so he, all the way th through, throughout production he was worrying, you know, worrying about whether he was being too big and over the top and we just had to assure him that uh, you know you have a real grasp of this character and um, and you're nailing it. And I think, you know, it's uh, amazing to, to watch it with audiences because he's the character that, that people really, um, they look to for the comedic relief between the more dramatic parts. Um, and then through Antonia Dalfan, our, our great casting director who we've worked with for, on several films, um, we found Marlene, who plays the loose character, and uh, and Reggie Cathy, who plays the pastor, and all the other wonderful supporting cast, and um, you know, it's it's wonderful for a director to have the the the, the freedom to to make these decisions and not be um, beholden to you know producers or financiers who say this is the list of the people you need to select from. Um, and I, I was very grateful that we were able to get the wonderful talent we we were able to get for this film. Music is, is of course a, a central part of this film and um, it's, it's funny to look back on, on the development of the screenplay because um, in earlier drafts Chris and I had the Letitia character, Nicole's a character, uh, at one point she was a social worker, at another point she was a poet and um, you know no offense to those uh, vocations but I think we made a much stronger choice in having her be a, a singer-songwriter. You know hits audiences on a different level and adds a lot to the narrative thrust of the film to have this music so deeply embedded in the story. In the film itself Nicole performs five songs or five fragments of songs um, and the process of developing those was really uh, wonderful for, for me. I'd never, I'd never used music so centrally in a film 
And uh, so part of the audition, of course, was to have actresses come in and uh, you know work with some of the scenes, but then also sing something. And, and I was a little apprehensive because I didn't know if Nicole could sing. I'd seen her in American Violet, and I was very excited about her coming to audition. And then when she came in and sang, it was clear, like, okay, we're done. She's she's not only an incredible performer, she's also an amazing singer. And then the process from there was we we um, Chris and myself and Scott Jacoby, who's an old friend of mine, he's the the composer and uh, he's a music producer. Uh, we wrote the lyrics together to match the themes in the film, and then Scott. Um, arranged and composed the music and it was very much written to Nicole's strengths so she came into the studio and sang for him and, and us and then Scott wrote them around what he thought would be styles that would work for her and um, and I think that process from my perspective went really really well and, and the result is you know five songs that uh, we also recorded for the soundtrack in, in their full versions and I think they're incredible so I was again very grateful to work with Scott and 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 just amazed by what Nicole was able to do um, from a singing standpoint. And apparently she's a triple threat. I didn't know but apparently she's an incredible uh, dancer also so we only used the uh, act acting and singing but maybe next time we'll get her to dance too. So yeah this was really a film that we shot uh, on our home turf with our our production family that we've been working with for many years and um, you know my producing partner at Sakala Filmworks Diane Crespo um, you know brought everyone back together and our cinematographer uh, Dan Hersey and we had John Campbell our AD and Isaac our line producer and, and Beth and Jessica and hair and makeup and all these these people we would worked with before on other films so it's always a um, it's like bringing a big family together and everyone's um, happy to work together again. We, you know, had minimal drama um, and it was, I think, a lot of fun for for a lot of people. Um, I certainly felt felt very supported and uh, honored to work with all these passionate uh, people in our production team. So you have the, the love story between um, the Nicholas and Letitia characters. But then you also have this um, developing love story with, with the pastor and with the loose character. Uh, and I think it's inter it was interesting to write this um, and also to shoot it and look at how romance is different for people in their 20s or 30s and then m much older, those who've already been through marriages or had you know real heartache or lost a partner. and. Um, and I think it's something the audience is really responsive to, is to see these two love stories unfold. And you have Luz, who's just this really lovable character, who's clearly um, in love with the pastor, uh, but also frames it in this, this practical way, like, you know what, we should just be together because we're both lonely, and we both believe in the same things, and I think we can have a good life together. And I think that hits the Reggie character from the blind side, but then he realizes of course that what she's saying is true and what his daughter is saying is true. Reggie and Marlene gave us gave us performances that, that make it a believable love story too. And uh, Reggie is an amazing actor and people know him from The Wire and from many movies and um, we uh, there's you know we, we wrote the sermons out for, for the scenes in the church and um, <laughs> and I think he just he just loved it. He loved what was there and he just went for it. And we actually have a take, and maybe it'll be part of the DVD extras, where he goes, he, he gave us I think a nine, maybe a, maybe 11 minute sermon, totally off, off book. So not what was written, but in the right frame. Uh, and, uh, and everyone was just blown away. And I think he got like a standing ovation. Um, but of course we had to then rein it back in in, in post-production because we couldn't have this 11 minute sermon but anyway you know Reggie and all the actors they just they really they brought a lot more than than of course you anticipate as a director and uh, and they you know they just enriched the, the script that was there and that's what you hope for and dream for and I think we were really lucky to have that happen with all of our actors who you know are just amazing working actors most of them based in New York
We wrote this script for Brooklyn and for New York City, and so um, you know we knew we knew going in exactly where we were going to be shooting. And this is a neighborhood I've lived in for 15 years. You know, we, we were shooting in establishments and on streets that uh, I'd spent much time on, and um, and we had a lot of connections in the neighborhood, and um, and we had a lot of fun. We shot 19 days in Brooklyn and two in Manhattan. And in many ways, the, the film is a sort of a, it's a love story, but it's also a love song to New York City and Brooklyn uh, and the romance that can happen uh, with the city also. And um, I think people respond to that, even especially people who've spent time in New York and Brooklyn, but, but also others who really feel like that that's a, a, a central part of the film is how it really feels like a genuine depiction of, of urban life or what can happen in a big city. I made some changes in my mind.